Alright guys, so in this video, we're going to be making this render. So there are basically two versions of this. Um, the first one is this one. Um, so basically, this is uh, the bottle with just the text. So the label is transparent. And the other one, the label is visible. So this is a paper wrapped around um, uh, the bottle. So yeah, we're going to be making this. And so for this, I would highly, highly recommend you to use a reference. Um, so I'm going to be using this reference right here. Um, yeah, this one right here. So uh, it looks pretty good. And I think uh, the dimensions are perfect so that we can just model on top of this. And I'm going to be showing you how to import a reference in, uh, in Blender and how to use it. But where exactly can you get your references? I would, um, I'm just going to show you a quick method. So just go to pinterest.com and simply search for um, serum bottle or whatever you're trying to make, you can make creams and stuff like that. So you can just search for a serum bottle um, or any other object. And then you can just choose any of these images. Um, I would not recommend you to make this without um, uh, without a reference because then you would have no idea of the actual dimensions of the product and how the aspect ratio and everything works. So yeah, I would recommend you to use a reference, right? So once you have your reference ready, just go to Blender. I'm just going to open Blender real quick. All right, so Blender is opened and I'm just going to be deleting everything and let's press Control S to save this. I'm just going to name it product underscore design ss2 because i think i made another one as well right so i'm just going to be saving this blender file right here you can save it wherever you want so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to bring blender in windowed mode and i'm just going to be dragging this reference right here inside of blender now you're going to see if i just um un uh, lock blender again you're going to see that we have this image however it's going to be lined up with whatever perspective you were in right so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to press control uh i'm going to press alt r on my keyboard so that's going to reset the rotation However, I have mapped alt R to something else. Um, so it just opens this um, performance overlay of my graphic card. So instead what I can do, I can simply go, uh, I can simply um, click this icon right here and it's gonna open this menu. And inside this item, I can just select these rotation values and I can just zero them out. So now you're gonna see that the rotation is gonna be zeroed. And again, the position is not zero. So you can just simply press um, alt and G. So it's gonna rotate, uh, it's gonna reset the position. Alternatively, you can come up here and just simply zero these values out as well. Right, so now this is done. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be rotating this 90 degrees in the x-axis so that it's vertical, um, because obviously we want to we want to bottle we want to model the bottle vertically. So I'm just going to press R and Z on my keyboard, so that's going to lock it to the z-axis, and I'm just going to write 90 on my keyboard, so it's going to lock it to 90 degrees. Right, perfect. Now I can just simply go to the front view, and I can create. Uh, I can just go to add, and I can add a mesh, which is going to be a cylinder. Right, so I can just simply start modeling now. And I'm just going to be scaling it down something like that. Something like that should be good. Yeah, now it's just um, uh, now the next step is just to model this out. And before that, what I'm going to do is that I'm simply going to be applying a subdivision surface modifier to this. So I'm just going to go to the modifier menu and I'm going to be adding a modifier, which is going to be subdivision surface and the levels. Let me just set it to three by default, because that's what we're going to be using. Otherwise, it's going to be very jagged and it's not going to look smooth at all. Right, so now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be um, going into edit mode uh, with the X-ray mode turned on so that we can select all sides, right? All sides are being selected. Now I'm just going to go to face select mode and I'm going to be selecting the bottom face so that we can bring it down, GZ, something like that. And now we can just extrude it out, extrude it, something like that, scale it down slightly so that we are matching the shape of the bottle, scale it down again. And I think this should be good. I'm just going to scale it down, something like that. And that should be good. But right now, the problem is if I just get out of my edit mode by pressing tab, you're going to see that this weird shading issue is happening. Um, similarly, on the top as well, this weird, we're getting this weird shading issue. So to fix that, I'm simply going to be adding, uh, I'm, just going to, I'm just going to be selecting this face and I'm going to be pressing I on my keyboard to inset it. So it's going to create another face. Now this face will not have that issue, right? So you're going to see that our shading issues are gone. We still are noticing a slight bit of that issue. So for that, what I can do, what I can simply do is I can just inset it once like um, something like that and another time and I can make it pretty small. So now it's going to get rid of those shading issues completely. However, one thing which I'm noticing right now is that this edge is a little sharp right now. So I'm just going to be double clicking this edge. Let me just go to uh, edge select mode first. Let me just double click this edge so that this whole edge loop is selected. And now I can just press G twice on my keyboard to move this edge and I'm just going to be moving it slightly up. Let me scale it up slightly. I think that should be fine. Now I'm just going to go to face select mode. Let's select the top face. And let's GZ, something like that. And I'm just going to be pressing E to extrude. 
and something like that should be good however i'm going to be scaling it down quite a lot something like that let's extrude it one more time something like that should be good however i'm going to be scaling it down quite a lot perfect let me just add a loop cut by pressing ctrl and r so it's going to just sharpen up this edge because we want that it should be pretty sharp again the, we are having some shading issues there so i'm just going to be selecting i'm just going to be going into face select mode and press i once and yeah i think that should get rid of that issue perfect so our bottle is complete and now let's make um the, the gap right so for the gap you have two options you can either select you can either create a new cylinder or you can uh, simply just um just select one of these edge loops and you can duplicate it uh, which we did in the previous tutorial uh, but for this one i'm going to show you the other method which is going to be creating a new cylinder so i'm just going to be doing that because i would recommend you to know all the methods um, or in fact most of the methods which exist so that you can choose um which one to use based on the situation the situation because in some situations one is going to be easier than the other so yeah you should know all of them something like that should be good now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be adding a modifier first subdivision surface modifier and just set the levels to three and let me just first select the bottom face let's first go to the face select mode that's good and i'm just going to be moving it up slightly something like that that should be good let me just extrude it a little bit and let me just scale it in and i'm just going to extrude it again but this time i'm going to make it inside and some more as well right so be, because we want the gap to be um to be empty from the inside right so that's going to add um some good effects let me just add a loop cut out there so that we can make this edge sharper you can switch between the x-ray mode and uh and the solid mode solid view mode to get to get a better perspective of your object and what you're making i'm just going to be adding a loop cut right there as well so that we can make this edge sharper as well let me get out of my edit mode and let's see how it looks i think it looks pretty good yeah this bottom area looks pretty decent and now let's work on the top area because that surely does not look decent at all um so i'm just going to be selecting the top face and gz bring it down a little bit extrude it up something like that scale it down and i'm just going to be inserting it because to get rid of those shading issues once and once again and so there is that um the only thing which i'm noticing right now is that this top part is a little too curved so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be adding a loop cut right there maybe something like that i think that should be pretty good yep that works so now i'm just going to create this top part uh, so for the stop part, I'm just going to be, um, instead of actually creating another cylinder, because that's going to take too much time, because we're going to have to add um, a subdivision service modifier and everything. So I'm just going to be selecting this edge loop right here, this inner edge loop, shift D to duplicate this, right click to reset the position, and I can just press P to separate and by selection. So now I'm just going to create a, diff a new face, which we can um, sort of base our model on. Let me just place it right there, tab into edit mode, Press A to select everything. I'm just going to be scaling it up slightly so that it matches up with our reference. Press E to extrude um, and scale it down. And yeah, this uh, basically this is all there is to it. You just have to follow the reference um, and just see what looks good and what doesn't. Now, I would recommend you to um, spend some time copying your reference very accurately because generally, if you don't, um, if you rush this process, then your object is not going to look very good. So. Right now, I'm trying to do it pretty fast because um, I'm trying to make the, uh, I'm trying to keep this tutorial short. However, I would recommend you um, to, uh, to to spend a lot of time on this if you are working on a commercial project or even a hobby project. So I'm just going to be inserting the top face, something like that, because we want this edge to be uh, this top part to be pretty curved, right? But still, we do have some shading issues, so I'm just going to be inserting it once again, and that should get rid of all these issues. Perfect. Now the bottom. So for the bottom, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be, um, let me just add a loop cut right there to make this edge sharper, something like that. And let's select the bottom face and let's inset it slightly, something like that. Maybe scale it down a little bit to make this edge a little more smooth because it was way too sharp before and it still looks a little too sharp. So I'm going to be um, basically selecting this edge loop right here. First go to the edge select mode, select this edge loop. And I'm going to press G twice so that we can move it up a little bit. Um, the closer the edge loops are to your edges, then um, the sharper your uh, object is going to be. So yeah, that, just keep that in mind and just try to make your objects 
um, a little, um, try to make your edge loops a little away from the edges if you want to um, increase the smoothing. So this inner part, I'm, just gonna, I'm simply going to be just selecting this one, uh, this object right here, this cap, pressing Shift D, press Z to lock it to the Z axis, move it up, and then I'm going to be scaling it down. We could obviously model another cylinder. However, this just works and I mean, yeah, it just saves us some time as well. And so it looks pretty good. The only thing which, uh, now we can obviously make um, some adjustments to this because this uh, cap looks a little too thick. So I'm just going to be tab, I'm just going to be pressing tab uh, to go into edit mode, press A to select everything, press S to scale it down and press shift Z to, um, uh, to scale it down in all axes except for the Z axis. So I'm just going to be going into perspective mode so that you can see it, you can uh, have a better look at it. Press S to scale it down. You're going to see that we can scale it down in all axes. But if I press Shift Z, it's only going to scale it down in the X and Y axes. Right. So let me just go to the front view and S Shift Z scale it down slightly. I think that should be a better option. And I'm just going to be selecting these two. And let me just move them down a little bit. Something like that. You can probably scale this down as well. This up, or maybe it's fine. One thing which I would like to do is I'm just going to select these this part and I'm going to be and I'm going to be pressing G and Z on my keyboard to like sort of make this bottle a little longer. Now, obviously, copying the reference blindly is not the way to go. You can make changes if you want. And I did make some changes as well, right? So I'm just going to get rid of the, the empty, the reference basically. And now we have the bottle complete. The modeling part is done. Now let's move on to the next part, which is going to be setting up the scene. All right, so if I just open this image, you're going to see that the scene is actually pretty simple. We just have a ground, a floor. Um, so I'm just going to create that simply go to add object and plane now i'm just going to keep the plane right there and i'm going to be selecting the portal objects and i'm going to be moving them up i think everything is selected yeah and let me just go to the side view the front view and i'm going to press gz and i can just move them up something like that should be good perfect uh so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be just selecting all of them let me select the reference as well and let me just create a new collection right click new collection let me just drag them in this collection. I'm just going to name it portal just to keep um, the seed more organized. This I'm going to name it floor. And so I'm just going to be scaling it up slightly. Something like that should be good. Um, and maybe a little more. Right. So apart from the floor, we have this wall on the background. So in the previous render, what we did was we um, created an infinite floor look. Um, however, in this one, we're going to be creating a flat wall. Um, so the good thing about this wall is that it has these these little shadows right there. If I just create, if I just sort of extrude this area, if I just select this edge and if I extrude it up, you're going to see that it's going to look very sharp and it's not going to have those shadows, right? So what, I'm, what I did instead was that I simply created a cube, add mesh cube. I placed it somewhere like there, scaled it up. I'm just going to be scaling it up. Let's place it right there. And so for this, what I did was that I moved it up firstly, and then I added a slight bevel to this. So what I'm just going to do is that with this cube selected, I'm just going to go to the modifier menu and I'm going to be adding a modifier, which is going to be the bevel modifier. Now, obviously it's way too large for now. Um, but before that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to press control A, uh, that's going to apply the scale, right? So it's going to add the bevel uniformly. And so I'm just going to be reducing the amount to something like that. And let's increase the segments quite a lot. Right, so I'm just going to be eyeballing it for now. We are going to be tweaking these settings later on. The good thing about this bevel modifier is that you can obviously change it later on. If you, for example, use um, the control B tool um, like this, you don't have the opportunity to um, modify it later on in uh, if, for example, you want to change the bevel, right? So you don't have that opportunity, but with this bevel modifier, you do have that. So with that being done, uh, I'm just going to create these two blocks, uh, which are going to have this marble texture. So I'm just going to be copying this one. Let's move it right there. Let's scale it down, something like that. Scale it down. I'll just bring it down. Make sure that it is aligned with the ground. And so for now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be bringing this object right here. And the reason for that is because I want to set the origin of this object, which is currently right here in the in the geometric center of, center of this object. I want to set this to the floor, right? So the reason for that is because I want to scale them up and I want to scale them up from the bottom so that they don't um, 
basically if I scale it up right now, you're going to see that it's going to go inside the floor and we're going to have to move it up every time we scale it, right? But if we set the origin to the floor, then it's going to scale up from the top, right? It's not going to scale up from the bottom. So I'm just going to be selecting this object. Let's go to object, set origin and origin to 3D cursor. Now if I scale it up, you're going to see that it's going to scale up from the ground. And if I just place it right there, you can see that we can scale it up. However, it's not going to um, go inside the floor. So that's good. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to be placing it like that. Somewhere like that. Let's scale it down in the y-axis. Something like that should be good. Let's scale it up in the x-axis. Like that. And let's place it right there. Now, Obviously, for this, this is obviously all personal preference. And I would recommend you to not copy my layout. And I would recommend you to come up with your own. However, I'm just going to show you how to do this. Exactly what to do. That is your job. And I think those should be good. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be scaling this down in the z-axis to make it smaller. Now, one thing which you're going to be noticing is that since we have scaled these objects quite a lot, the bevel is going to be a little messed, right? So if I just zoom in, I hope you notice this, but um, the, from this part, it's going to bevel a lot more. And from this part, it's not going to bevel that much. So it looks very weird. And um, right now, the difference is not too noticeable because the bevel is very small. But if I increase the bevel, you're going to see that the difference becomes very apparent, that it's not beveling correctly. Um, and it's going to really show up when we go into the rendered mode. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be selecting both of these objects. I'm going to press Control A, and I'm going to apply the scale. Now you're going to see that it's going to bevel uniformly. So that is, that is exactly what you want. And so that is perfect. Now let me just select these objects, and let me just shade them smooth, because we forgot to, we forgot to do that before. And that should be good to go. We could shade smooth these as well. But I don't think it's necessary, um, so I'm not going to bother with that. Right, so next up, I'm going to be setting up the camera. Um, but before that, let me just import this um, box right here. So for the box, you could I obviously either just create a cube and you could just place it behind that. Or the other option would be to model um, a, model a realistic looking box with with these like top part, uh, this top part sticking out a little bit and stuff like that. Or you can simply just import it from Blender Kit. So just go to Blender Kit and I'm going to be searching for box. Let me just go to the search filters and set it to free first, you're going to see this box right here, I used this one. So I'm going to be I'm going to be importing this. Now, if you don't have blender kit add on installed, you can just simply go to blenderkit.com. And you can just press download blender, blender kit right here. And just follow these instructions and you will um, install it, right. So it just shows you a tutorial right here. All right, so once you have this imported, right, right now, the scale is very low. So I'm just going to be opening this collection and let me just bring it out. I'm just going to name it box instead of box of medicine. And I'm going to right click this, select objects, and let me just scale it up. Now, the good thing about these objects is that uh, the ones which we import from Blender Kit is that their origin is already on the 3D cursor so that we don't have to um, bother with them going ins inside the floor. Just place them once on the floor and they should be good to go. Something like that should be good. Let me just go to the top view and let me place it somewhere like that. You can obviously rotate it and uh, rotate it according to your liking. And I think something like that should give us a pretty realistic look. You can also um, sort of modify this by pressing tab and going into edit mode. And then you can just select these individual vertices and you can bring them down if you want. For example, if this is looking too um, exaggerated for you, you can just bring it down a little bit. Maybe something like that. And you can bring this down as well. Maybe this one. You see, something like that. So yeah, it really comes down to your personal preference and what kind of look you're going for. But yeah, I guess I'm going to bring this down as well. GZ. I think it should be good. Yeah, we're good to go. Right, so now I think our scene is looking pretty good. Now let's, let me just set up my camera so that we can see um, from the perspective of what we're going to see in the end. Just add a camera. Just click this icon right here to go inside the camera. And then I'm just going to go to view and lock camera to view. Now we can move the camera according to our liking. Something like that should be good. However, I'm just going to go to this output properties and let me just set all of them, both of them to 2000 by 2000 because I want it to be a square render and I'm going to be increasing the focal length to something like 80 millimeters because usually product shots have a very high focal length. Something like that should be good. I'm just going to be selecting this bottle and let me just move it a little right there behind this bottle. And I think we should be good to go. 
perfect let me just unlock this so that i can move my viewport um and it looks pretty good the only thing left right now is to add these plants and then we can move on to texturing this so let me just add the plants first uh, i'm just going to search i'm just going to go to blender kit and i'm going to be searching for plant and well this is the easiest way to add plants you can obviously import them from the internet um, you can just import models however i've found that uh, just using blender kit is probably the easiest part let me just use this one modern plant let's just wait for it to download all right so now the plant has been downloaded i'm just going to go inside this box collection uh, so whichever collection you have currently selected your blender kit objects are going to come inside that collection so i'm just going to be moving this out um, yeah, you can either just click out of it, click out of that collection, and it's going to come up in your um, scene collection. Although, uh, however, you can simply just um, drag it out of that collection when it comes inside it. So I'm just going to be selecting this object and just move it something like that. Maybe scale it up. I'm just going to go inside my camera to see how it looks. And I'm going to be bringing it very close to the camera. Of course, no, right now it doesn't look good at all um, because of uh, because the textures are not being applied correctly. But once we um, bring it inside the, what do you call it, inside the rendered mode, then it's going to look, hopefully, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good. Actually, you know what? Let me just hide it for now. And once we're done with the texturing, then we can just bring these plants. Because right now, obviously, we can't really judge whether it looks good or not by looking at this, right? So what I'm going to do now is let me just uh, first, let me first let me work on the lighting. Then we're going to be working on the texturing. 